hand versus chainsaw. It looks painful. Our hospitals are taking care of more patients than ever. You're right. <laughs> With medical teams under constant pressure. Can Dr. Pixie come to resource, please? Somebody as poorly as this little one, we really need to treat them quickly. To meet our expectations. I'm just worried about what it's going to be like afterwards. But there's a crucial member of the team we sometimes forget. I've never ever been on a bed like this. The hospital bed. Another ward, another storage, another bed. <laughs> In our lifetime, we are likely to need one of them at least three times. I've probably spent a quarter of my life on a hospital bed. <laughs> In this series, our cameras have been given unprecedented access to beds in four very different hospitals across the country. It's life, life and death, and everything that goes in between. We'll see the world through the bed's eyes. Hello, my love. Hiya. As they share the most challenging. I don't know what to do. I don't know. Most intimate. Yeah. Yeah. And most rewarding. Happy birthday. Hospital <laughs> wonderful. Moments of our lives. Thank you for being here. Have you been anywhere else? And a hospital cannot function without beds. Beds are vital. This is the secret life of the hospital bed. Newcastle upon Tyne is the largest city in the northeast. At its centre is the Royal Victoria Infirmary. The hospital's accident and emergency department sees more than 2,000 people a week. At the minute, there aren't any beds next door. There is movement next door, though, and I think there's about 20 beds in the system. So expect movement. It's a busy environment where the needs of patients take priority. So it's about patient care, really, as opposed to beds. I mean, it's important that we move patients on because we've got other patients coming in, but it, the, the, the actual care of the man here is, more, is the most important thing. A&E bed nine is prepped, ready for its next patient. It's one o'clock and 79-year-old Maria is shown to her bed. She's had a bad fall and may have broken her nose. I shot that there. Many people as short did, as me. did you tell them where you were when you fell? Coming out of a pub. Out of a pub? Yes, but However, I wasn't drinking. I was, it was the Chrysanthemum yeah. Daily Society. Ah. <laughs> What's the and you haven't been drinking anything? No, no, I don't drink when I'm out. Just when you're in? <laughs> On the Saturday night. It's the only time I drink. Across the UK, one fifth of all those admitted to A&E are 65 or older. Maria will be one of up to eight patients Nurse Wilson will care for today. I have a bad back. That's better, thank you. Is that you. grand? Yeah. Um, I'll pop the side up. Just for I'm safe. not going to fall out. Just for You've already had one fall. I'd be mortified if you had another. Can you imagine? It looks as if I'm pathetic. It's a safety thing. I can put it down if you want. Oh, all right. No. Go along with what you want. <laughs> Which is lovely. She's dead sweet. I used to look after uh, old people um, uh, um, uh, when I worked for the agency. I moved around lots of different care homes and uh, they're belt a crack. They're always belt a crack. The best. <laughs> Maria's injuries will be examined by Dr Minhas, who's been practising medicine for more than five years. Good morning. Oh, sorry, it's good afternoon. It's afternoon yeah. Sorry. <laughs> How are you today? I'm fine, but a little uh, worse for wear. What happened? I was at the Chrysanthemum and Dahlia Society meeting and I was leaving. It's in a pub but I hadn't been drinking. And I missed a step and fell flat on my nose. I didn't break my glasses, but this is what's happened. They wanted me to come last night and I wouldn't. What other health issues do you have? High blood pressure, problems with my eyes. I've got glaucoma beginning to come in this one. And it's only on the right side? Yes. One in ten people of Maria's age develop glaucoma, a condition that causes gradual loss of sight and can lead to blindness. Dr Minhas 
We'll check that the fall hasn't aggravated her condition and also find out if her nose is broken. Is it tender when I touch it? Or? No, you're very gentle. <laughs> When you had this episode, you didn't lose consciousness or anything no. like that? And no. You didn't vomit it afterwards? No. And, 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 and I wasn't dizzy? I mean, no. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and talk to the maxillary people to see whether they want to come and see you. Do they want to have an x-ray done before, before, we, before they see you? So I'll just go and talk to them and then I'll come right. and talk to them. Okay. okay. Maria will be with A&E Bed 9 until she's received a full diagnosis and treatment. Sister Hill is the nurse in charge today. She'll ensure Maria's stay is a comfortable one while she waits for her results. Hello. Hi. Oh, you did a good job. I did wonderful. <laughs> like a raccoon. It's all right, it'll go, it'll fix. Do you take warfarin? No. No um, blood thinners? No. And a cup of tea then? Oh, how wonderful. Milk? No sugar. Milk, no sugar. How kind you are. I'll tell you what, I'd like to go to the loo. How are you then? They've been falling again. I've been using those steps to get in. That's a long little. Come on. <laughs> when do your baby do? December. Mm, wonderful. A bit longer. I don't know if it's a girl or a boy yet though. The maternity unit at the Queen's Hospital in Romford, Essex is one of the largest in the country, with 25 beds in specially designed suites. Well, well, hello. hello! Happy birthday to you! Hello, Mummy. You're amazing. Every week, it welcomes over 170 newborn babies into the world. This is maternity bed seven. Its patient, 36-year-old Tori, has chosen to have a cesarean after a traumatic first birth. With husband Russ by her side, she'll be under the watchful eye of midwife Ingram until it's time to go to surgery. Hi, Dora. I'm at for the day. Hi, yeah. I just, what happened the previous time? Um, just failed induction, okay. so um, it was three days in you the hospital. You had all the tablets? Yeah, they did all the pessaries, they <coughs> tried to break my waters, but told me that my cervix hadn't opened, so they decided to go for a C-section. And the blood pressure was fine throughout pregnancy? Yeah, throughout pregnancy it's been fine. And you're having a boy or girl? I don't know. Oh, no. <gasps> Baby surprise, right? Yeah. What do you have at home? A little, little girl. girl. So you might want a boy or a girl? As long as they're healthy, don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Do not many patients keep it as a surprise anymore? No. Really? I few of them, yeah. Oh, no, right, OK. When she that, the first time we saw the midwife when we had Katie, they were surprised we were married. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> uh, that's More than 2,500 caesareans are performed at this maternity unit every year. It's 1pm. Tori and Russ have been with Bed 7 for an hour and a half. But yeah, we met on plentyoffish.com. It's strange because we've both come out of relationships where we were, we were both due to get married. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both started the getting venues and things like that and it all yeah. went a bit south. And then we got together in November 2011. Yeah, when you find the right one, you find the right one. You're making sure I look presentable. <laughs> There's no way of looking presentable in a hospital bed, I don't think. How dare you? I wonder how often they get changed. Like bearing well, the, in mind how many people... What, the what the actual bed itself? Yeah. Or the stuff on it? Like, well, no, just bearing in mind, like, how many people have delivered babies on this bed. I imagine they are built to last quite a while, aren't they? Because they're all, they're all metal framed. Tori was in labour for three days with their first child, but this time she's decided on a caesarean and is hoping she'll be in theatre within an hour. The Great North Children's Hospital in Newcastle is one of 14 specialist centres across the UK. 
There are more than 240 beds here, and bed 30 is home to eight-year-old Mason. He was rushed into A&E three days ago with mum, Michaela. He's now been transferred to the ward for further tests and observation. Hello, good evening, thank you speaking. Hi, it's Clem, Pete's coordinator. Oh, hello. For the last four years, Mason's been treated for benign hypercranial tension, pressure on the brain. I've had it since I was four. This time, his condition seems much worse. It was about 10 o'clock in the morning, he started to have seizure. Um, the seizure lasted about eight minutes. It was absolutely terrifying. I just froze, I didn't know what to do. His eyes were rolling back. He was dead unresponsive. Then he started to forget things after that. <coughs> so it was distressing for him as well, because he couldn't remember people in the family, he couldn't remember me. When I had um, my seizure, um, I didn't remember a thing. I couldn't even remember who my mum was or who my teddies were. Basil and Storm. He gets headaches and that's part of his condition is the headaches. But the seizures are new things. He's never had a seizure before. One in 20 of us will experience a seizure during our lifetime. They can be triggered by stress, excitement or a lack of sleep. It's Mason's first attack, but with continuous pressure on his brain, he's a familiar face at this hospital. He's been in anaesthetic eight times. It's horrendous, he's only eight. He's been through what most adults go through in the lifetime. He's had it in the last four years. I don't uh, like hospital beds better than my bed. And I don't like having much comfy pillows as mine. These pillows are like no fluff. No fluff. Mason might not like bed 30, but he loves the food. I've got spaghetti bolognese and roast potatoes. And that's uh, really nice. And um, it's not better than my mum's. While Mason's been in hospital, He's undergone a series of tests. There's one more left, and it could prove crucial. I'm actually waiting for um, a scan uh, for my head. I'm just waiting for an MRI scan for Mason's head to find out if there's anything there that's causing seizures. We don't know if his condition's getting worse, or there's something else contributing to it. To have the MRI, I will not know. I will be more than Mason. I think Mason just takes it in his stride, don't you? The MRI scan will take place later today. Until then, Mason can enjoy lunch on bed 30. Back in Newcastle's Royal Victoria Infirmary, bed nine is with 79-year-old Maria, who has a suspected broken nose. She's being cared for in A&E by Sister Hill. So the doctors assessed her, and given sort of such facial bruising um, and tenderness, the doctor wants to refer her for an X-ray. So she's going to go round to the X-ray department, they'll take the X-ray views, and when she returns, they'll have a look at them. They come on the system immediately, so we'll be able to know if there's any fractures. And depending on whether there's a fracture, it will depend on our management plan. Maria's worried that her worsening eyesight may have caused her fall and could threaten her independence. There's a lot I couldn't do if I was blind. So, all my hobbies are all looking at things. So it would be very debilitating for me. I'm worried in case they say don't drive for a bit. So I'll have to get taxis, as I'm not staying in. 60% of women over 75 live alone. Before Maria is discharged, the A&E team must be confident that she can look after herself at home. Hello, Mary. Hello. Hello, I thought I'd come and see you. See you and see what's going on. Not very pretty, is it? Oh, you look fine. <laughs> <laughs> is that a fact? So all of this... Has come this morning. Has come this morning. It wasn't like that last night. If I'd have seen that last night, I think I would have come. But... So, so who brought you in this morning? In by taxi. And when you go home, is there someone in the house no, with you? No, I live on my own. My on. husband died four months ago. Sorry to hear that. It's all right. He had Alzheimer's and it was a blessing that he died because he'd been ill ten and a half years. Just a living death. 
you can lose people twice, you know, you lose them once with the disease and then you lose them again and you lose them. I was pleased for him that he died because it wasn't him. He didn't know me for the last three months. He didn't know whether I was his wife, his mother or one of the care assistants. So it was awful. I used to sit and cry in the car park. Mm -hmm. But it was a lovely man. He really was. Yeah, such a shame. He didn't deserve to be like that. But there we are. We can't pick and choose, can we? We can't. No. Sorry. Quite it... emotional about him. Yeah, I'll get your tissue done. I'm fine. I'm fine. Just give me one. I don't want any more. I'm not going to cry again. That was them calling for me. I'm going to leave these with you. Right. All right. All right, if you want for anything, press that button. The big orange bit in the middle. I won't need that, will I? No, but if you want for anything, give me a shout. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Twenty-seven year old Sister Hill is in charge of the many beds on this busy A and E ward, taking care of around three hundred patients every day. And you want five of Oramore. We can see sometimes in twenty-four hours up to three hundred patients a day. So those twenty-five trolleys do the rounds each time. In the morning, they might have had a major trauma on, on the bed and they've had a full trauma team to, to a toe injury all in one day. Beds in the hospital essentially see everyone's secrets, everyone's tales and everyone's stories. They see the saddest times. It's OK. <laughs> they can see laughs, they can see staff sharing secrets with each other. They see everything. Nothing gets past the beds. Yes. Yes. Right, okay. To an A&E nurse, what's important is well, making sure the patients are OK. Right, okay. Do you have on that green bed? No. As well as coordinating the beds and treating patients, Sister Hill is also responsible for training the next generation of A&E nurses. No, so this is your morning, the afternoon, and then, like, when I come back in on Thursday, I might be in charge in the morning, and on triage in the afternoon could be completely different. Like, as a sister, you tend to not have as much variety as where you can work from. You were trying to get this, didn't you, like? Under her charge, the A&E department has won an award for their mentoring work. Badges. Oh, <laughs> look at that. What placement of the year in the whole hospital. The whole trust, isn't it? The whole the trust, trust the yeah. Whole trust. That's the emergency department. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. Well <laughs> done. Oh, well done. A lot of the time, it's just such negative comments towards A and E, and we don't get recognised for all the wonderful things that we do. And it's really hard to mentor student nurses when we're in the middle of an emergency or there's a major trauma, and to manage a major trauma or you know a cardiac arrest and teach a student. That's a skill, so they should be really proud of themselves. Uh, we're going to leave it on the table so that all the staff can see our amazing achievement and they can all be really proud of themselves. I'm so excited! <laughs> Queen's Hospital Maternity Unit in Romford, Essex. On bed seven is mum-to-be Tori and her husband, Russ. It's gone quiet. You like that? <gasps> Calm before the storm. A difficult first birth two years ago meant Tori had to undergo an emergency caesarean. To avoid a repeat this time, she scheduled an elective C-section. I think some people have got a view where it's, you know, you're not a real woman unless you've had a natural birth. And I just don't believe that because, as far as I'm concerned, surgery's still yeah, it's quite, a big, quite a big yeah. deal to kind of go through. Yeah. and. You know, I think the most important thing to remember, same with the breastfeeding, is that, you know, it's what's best for yeah, you for baby. baby. 
there's a bit of pressure on, oh, we should have a natural birth. But it's, um, yeah. I think it's one of those things, it's, as long as the baby's born and the baby's healthy, that's all that matters. Mm. If you look back through those pictures again. The UK has seen a rise in families with two or more children. It's a cheap one. Big changes are looming for Tori and Russ, and they're anxious about the impact on their two-year-old daughter, Katie. So that was... Katie, are Hi, you Katie. being a good girl? Hello, Katie. You being good for Nanny? Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see, we'll see you soon. See you yeah, soon. Yeah, with your baby brother or sister. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we're at the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we love you. Love you. Thank you. Love you. See you later, baby. <laughs> Bye. That is the one, the biggest unknowns we've got, how Katie's going to react. Yeah. Because she's been, some mornings she's been, sort of, she'll stroke take toys belly and she'll give it a kiss and she'll talk to it. And other mornings she would say it and she'll go, no. 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 Is it going to be a boy or a girl? No. It was going to be Hulk at one moment. It was, it? yes. Yeah. 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 And what we've been told is, or we've, what we've looked at is that the toddler tends to bond to the partner. Um, a lot more because yeah, mummy's so got the baby. Probably so more you, of a you need to be girl. a bit more um, yeah. understand it. I know that's something you've been a bit worried about, haven't you? Yeah. No. Being emotional. Yeah, not wanting mummy anymore would be a bit. She'll never not want mummy. No, I know. But yeah, you can understand it. It's just having yeah. that having to share. But she yeah. shares with other kids, all right. Mostly. Mostly. From what I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope she's all right. Did you just see yeah, that? Yeah, I just saw that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, knock, knock, coming out. The baby may be ready to make an appearance, but until their slot in the busy operating theatre arrives, all Tori and Russ can do is wait. In Newcastle, at the Great North Children's Hospital, eight-year-old Mason is on bed 30. He's waiting for the results of an MRI scan with mum, Michaela. Mason looks much better today than what he has the last week. I'm feeling as fresh as a dandelion. Mason has an existing condition, benign hypercranial tension, which causes pressure to build up in his brain. Admitted to hospital following a seizure, his parents are worried that his condition is getting worse. Don't know if there's any damage on the brain or if there's the pressure raised high. Mm. Hopefully we'll get that today once we get his MRI. Thank you. Well, um, uh, he looks good to me right now. <laughs> Dr Ramesh is Mason's consultant. He has news about the scan. Well, I don't think his pressure is really elevated. This is my clinical impression. I don't think it was an epileptic seizure. We have explored that. He has had a scan of his brain. It looks completely normal. Dr Ramesh can find nothing wrong with Mason's brain. He has his own explanation for the seizure. All through the night, a child who has been poorly, who stayed awake, got off the bed, collapsed and had an attack. Is that because of not enough sleep? That's the interpretation I'm putting on it now. Medicine is not black and white, man. Oh. Newcastle United <laughs> colours are black and white. But medicine is not like that. There are lots of grey areas in medicine. Whilst it's a relief to hear that Mason's OK, his parents are still worried that they may miss any warning signs in the future. Mason doesn't complain. And he will still get up and do whatever he needs to do, but he's, he dad's like that. He's had more accidents than I don't know what. She's just worries. Yeah. I worry as well, obviously, but if you're seeing that he's going to be fine, I'm happy with that. Mason looks well. All our assessments are normal. I am suggesting we wait and monitor the situation. I'm going to be seeing him in my outpatient clinic in another three weeks' time. I think Mason would like to go home, and I'm going to be sending him home today. So obviously relieved. Hopefully you just get back to his normal Hi, self. Hi, uh, normal daft self. Daft self? Mm-hmm. 
You going all shy because I'm going to have one now, aren't you? It's not so. You going all quiet? <laughs> well, I'm happy about the news, obviously. It's less worrying. And then we'll just have to take it from there and take him home, observe him, just bring him back if anything else happens. Yes, yeah, so I want to go home now. <laughs> home, sweet home. <laughs> It's time for Mason to leave. After three nights in hospital, he's off home. Bed 30 is free. Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth is the biggest single site hospital in Britain. Its day surgery ward can handle more than 100 new patients every day. Any of these patients arrived yet? The cardiac has been allocated. I'll go and see if 25 and 26 are ready. Today, day surgery bed 32 is playing host to Anthony. He's coming in for a double hand operation after an accident last year. We had some removal men moving our offices and one of them was coming in through the door of the offices. I opened the door for him, the crates were too high, he tripped, the crates fell on him and I caught them like this. And now I've had problems ever since, so it's that typical catching and your thumbs bending back over, so that was what caused it. I've got pain in both of my tendons that affect how you use your thumbs. So shaking hands, can opening cans, door handles, things like that are really painful. I was advised to have one done than the other, but it would have meant too much time off work, so I've elected to have them both done together. And it will probably turn out to be a very silly decision. Anthony is a senior manager at the hospital. Today, he's taking time out to have his tendons repaired by consultant surgeon, Mr. Gupta. It's not very often that you operate on two hands together. Most people do prefer to have one at a time done so that they can carry on with their normal life with the other hand. Because the big advantage of having them both done at the same time is that your recovery time is cut into half. So the new citizens will come and have a chat with you about the anesthesia, but most, yeah. most likely going to be a GA since you're doing both of them. There is a nerve that goes uh, down from there up into your thumb, supplies the area of the skin just around this. So we know that nerve is there and we take a lot of precautions to protect it. But it doesn't like being pushed and pulled around. Sure. So there may be some numbness around that area afterwards, but that okay. will recover with time. Yeah. Okay. No worries. As well as being a senior manager here, Anthony is also a regular patient. He's had five operations this year. Mike Pallacy took a cyst off here. I've had Socrates do my shoulder. I'm on Liam Blaney's pain team, so he sees me two to three times a year for bilateral subcutaneous knee blocks. It's getting to the bit I don't like now. I can't bear being cannulated. I hate it. Cannulation is the process of putting a needle into a vein to allow drugs to be administered intravenously. I don't worry about the surgery, but I absolutely hate being cannulated. I'll probably go into a cold sweat and I'll just be thinking something else. Anthony and bed 32 move to surgery. He's prepped for his cannula. It's inserted into his foot, leaving his hands free for surgery. Done. Oh. Thank you. Without the sharp scratch. <laughs> Anthony is separated from bed 32 for the duration of the operation. The procedure will take just over an hour. The A&E department of Newcastle's Royal Victoria Infirmary. <laughs> an hour after being admitted, 79-year-old Maria is returning to bed nine. Amazing. And the hair's a mess. I could have combed it. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> so are we going to tell your daughter? No. Sure? No, she's teaching. I was going to do that this morning and I thought, well, she goes, she goes to work at seven in the morning, 
Can I swing my legs over here yes. while I drink the tea? Thank you. I'll be back in a minute, my love. Thank you. A lot of elderly patients don't, um, they don't like to bother people. They don't like to feel like they're being a pest or they're creating extra work for you. So um, they tend to not, so you've got to often sort of stress. It's really not a problem. It's, you know, it's, it's part of our job and we're happy to ring. That lady has got capacity. She's alert, she's orientated. She can make the decision for herself. I've offered her several times and she really is adamant that she doesn't want to bother her daughter at the moment. So really, as long as, you know, we document that, we've got to be satisfied with her wishes. I've had my fair share of hospitals and you only come if you have to. I don't go to the doctor necessarily either. That's the way we were brought up. It's not somewhere I want to hang about. <laughs> Maria, Hello. you're going to go round for uh, an x-ray. Really? Okay. Do you want to just go on the bed? No. Of course not. <laughs> Are course you sure? Not. I'm positive. Okay. Wait there then. <laughs> Maria doesn't want to go on the bed to x-ray because she's so independent, which is brilliant. We'll get a porter to take her with a chair. Um, I can walk. For now, Maria leaves bed nine behind as she heads to the x-ray department. OK, can I get you to have a seat in this chair for me? You want my glasses off? Yes, please. Right, so chin right up for me, and we're gonna, I'm going to push you forward so your chin's going to touch the board. That's it, that's lovely. The tests will quickly reveal the extent of the damage caused to Maria's face. It will also show if she's fractured any bones. Thank you. So get your back round, all right. Thank you. And lift your feet. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello again. It's back to A&E yeah. Bed 9 to wait for the results. How many miles do you walk in a day? Yeah, it depends. Is it as possible what the hell, but... <laughs> On the maternity ward of Queen's Hospital in Romford, bed number seven is with expectant mother Tori and her husband Russ. A little bit nervous now. Following a difficult birth with their first child, Tori has opted for an elective caesarean. It's moving about a bit. <laughs> I think they're coming up, but they know. They're like, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> in the UK, well, one in four births are delivered by caesarean. Ready? Hello. I think she's very, she's very ready, I think. <laughs> not many mums wait to find out the sex of their baby, but Tori is one of the few. Be fine. Don't be nervous, oh, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Tony. Tori is transferred to the surgery bed. She's given an epidural injection to numb the nerves in the lower part of her body. Just relax now. Are you still smiling, which is good? Yeah. Just 20 minutes later, their baby is born. There we go. Hey, lovely. Oh, little girl, little girl. It's a little girl. Congratulations. One. I think a lot of people are afraid when they hear that they might have to have a C-section. But if you get great staff and that nice environment that kind of puts you at ease, it's not that bad. It's been a little bit easy this time because it hasn't been days, it's just been hours. But even so, it gets to that point where you want to get done and dust, you want them to see them. It's been nine months cooking, <laughs> and you just want them out. This morning, I couldn't imagine her 
and now I can't not imagine her being here. The birth went as planned. Tori and Russ are now hoping the first meeting with big sister Katie goes as well. Hello, Katie. Hello, baby. Say hello, Lucy. Yeah. It's all lots going on, isn't it? It's okay. Look, there's Lucy. It's very interesting. Um, new patterns would be the same. It's amazing how much of a spit she is of her, of her older sister. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to uh, some interesting times ahead. Yeah, very excited. For bed number seven at the Queen's Maternity Hospital, this day is just like any other. By 4 p.m., it's ready and waiting for its next expectant mother. Back at Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Day surgery bed 32 has been reunited with Anthony. He's been in surgery for just over an hour for an operation on both of his hands. Okay, Anthony, there we go, back on the ward. Thank you. All the best now. Take care. See you later. That's better, thank you. I can't, I can't shield my eyes. <laughs> Tendon damage is the second most common injury to hands. To aid recovery, he'll need help washing, dressing and cooking. We found what we expected. There were no undue problems along the way. It all went very smoothly. It's just not an unfamiliar environment for him, so it's not a strange environment. He's not overawed by the whole thing. Are you comfortable? Um, yeah, I'm fine, thank you very much. A surgery is still a surgery. It doesn't matter whether you are a lay person out on the street or even if you're a surgeon yourself, when you have a surgery, it's a big deal. Now, if you're in any pain, you must let me know, but I will be coming around you every half an hour sure. every way to do your Oh, no, shout, don't worry. It takes time to recover back to normal, and that time can sometimes be a, quite, quite frustrating for people, so, so, so patients do need a lot of support. Anthony has been alone for his operation, but as he is a senior manager here at the hospital, there's an ample supply of colleagues lining up to visit. Hello. Hello, you. How are you? <laughs> Hello, Hans. Hello. How are you? What can I say? Hello. 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 How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How long have you got to be elevated for? Well, probably until I go home. Because I'm certainly not going to be elevated in the car. Well, no, you can't like that, really. <laughs> I couldn't do anything with my hands, so all my drips and everything have gone oh, through my foot. Oh, of course. That's interesting. Just hold that for me, could you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, but <laughs> you'll you need to slip it under the covers. Are you going to do things? I'll manage. Yeah. Can you sip that water? Oh, please, yeah. Sue's do some nursing care. Nasty. Don't, I'm not nasty, you know that. So you'll come back and have a look at you in a minute. <laughs> yeah, this is an opportunity to be abusive, isn't it? <laughs> well, I can't do very much about it. Do you take these off for me, please? I, I need to go to the loo. After six hours, Anthony is ready to say goodbye to his day surgery bed and get home, where he'll be supported throughout his recovery. Thank you. No, day care surgery is great because you're in, you're out. I mean, you know, I arrived at half seven this morning. Here we are now, half one. I'm off home, back to my own bed and house. So all sorted. So it's great. I guess the thing for me is not to do too much. Otherwise, I'll undo the work that Manesh has just done in theatres. Really, I need to let it rest and heal. So. Day surgery bed 32 is free and ready for its next patient. At Newcastle's Royal Victoria Infirmary, 79-year-old patient Maria is returning from the x-ray department to bed nine. The doctor's waiting for me. Hello. How about that? Waiting for me. Maria already suffers from glaucoma. 
She's worried that her fall may have broken her nose and damaged her vision. Hey, Glenn, Thank you, Glenn. It's going to choke you. No, I'm getting out. Dr Minhas has his diagnosis. So how are you feeling now? Fine. Good. Your exit came back normal. Good. There's I'm pleased no about that. There's no concerns about that. His bruising will go away itself. What about the bits on my nose? The bits on nose, we just have to keep it clean and dry. So I can go home? Uh, I'm just, just going to get some bandage done up on like that and then you can go home. Oh. Okay. Isn't hospital wonderful? <laughs> Does it make you feel good that you've done that for me today? Okay, thank you. I'm going home. Are you going home? Yes. The good news travels fast. Maria. Hello. Have Nothing wrong with me. News? I'm going home. Oh, now. lovely. <laughs> so you have got this nasty bruising around your eyes. Mm. And do you know what? It might even get a bit worse over the next 24 hours. Oh, charming. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll get lots of sympathy. Do you think I might? I would say. Mm. So. Before Maria can leave, her wounds are cleaned to avoid infection. Yes. And I've always been like that. Right. You ready? So when are you going to tell your daughter? I'll text her a message. Text? Yes. And I'll say... If you've got nothing else to do, call on your way home. <laughs> She's fine. She knows what I'm like. So hopefully she'll understand. Because <laughs> I'm supposed to be going out to dinner tonight. Where are you going? Just some friends up the road. Well, you could still go. Do you think I could? I would. Good. Thank you for the permission. You're welcome. You're not going to be there late, are you? No, I could come You're home probably early. better off being around people so that they can keep an eye on you. Oh, I never thought about it that way. Rather than sitting by yourself, at least then, we won't be worrying about you so much. Oh, right. I'm going out then. <laughs> You're going out. <laughs> right. We're done. Do I not need anything on it? Really? You've got a cut here and a cut here. Yeah. And it'll just look like a scab for a little bit. Don't pick it. No. <laughs> It's nice to have a patient that's a pleasure to look after. Well, I'm, I'm not ill though, am I? That's the thing. That's the difference. No. I've kept them busy today. You <laughs> have. <laughs> Just over two hours after arriving, Maria's time on bed nine is done. Our hospital beds have given us intimate access to the work of the NHS. After a successful caesarean, Baby Lucy is at home and settling into life with big sister Katie. Mason has had no further fits since his short stay on paediatric bed 30. And Maria has recovered fully and is back to her sociable self. The beds are now back on their wards, ready and waiting for their next round of patients. <laughs>